his quick reaction uh, to uh, what he has just heard, among other things. Ash, uh, always good to see you. How are you good doing? Good to see you and a happy holidays. Uh, same Carter, to you. Well, your thoughts about the uh, the election matter? Now, clearly, I mean, the, the, the level of uncertainty that this process is still continues. We thought we had somewhat of a verdict. The markets were celebrating this morning some relief from all of this process. But I think we have bigger demons out there to slay, quite frankly, Tyler. We have uh, a compression in earnings forecast for fourth quarter and beginning of next year. We've got to deal with the Fed that will meet on December 19th. Uh, so there are other issues, I'm sure, that are much more grappling for the market. But certainly, any kind of relief from a presidential candidate and a, a president would help the market. So perhaps one cloud bank is uh, moving on, but there Precisely. are others that uh, remain and may be more important. Without a doubt, yes. And uh, these would be the uh, matter of interest rates, the economic slowing, and uh, what's happening with corporations. Your view here, then, is that the rally we may see over the next few days uh, may be a transitory one. Precisely. We get a small rally, a knee-jerk reaction, even for that matter, December 19th, where the Fed meets, and we're sort of rooting and anticipating the removal of the inflation bias. We get a real small reaction to that, not the large reaction that we anticipated. We think it's a little too late, a little too small a gesture overture for the market. At this and point. so how is an individual investor uh, supposed to make money in this kind of environment? Well, the near term is tough. No two things about it. I mean, this is a classic bot bear market. Good news is bad news. Bad news is worse news. So you hold on to own quality, look at your portfolios, reassess, and then you hope that the buzz about rate cuts that's generating early next year will help change this sentiment. Good news is bad news, and bad news is worse news. There you are. There's the, there's the headline on, on uh, what you're saying. If you were to look at uh, sectors in which to put money, where would you be doing? What, where would you be going? If I'm making the assumption that rate cuts are imminent at least first quarter of next year, second quarter, financials seem decent place to be in. There's some global growth still left to stimulate earnings in the, in the global banking sector. Insurance premiums are on the rise, so I like AIG. I like some of those names there. Chubb, for instance, uh, mm -hmm. American Express, yes. Okay, fine. Uh, Ash, thanks very much. You're welcome. Ash Reagan joining us today from Prudential Securities across the river in New York. Dow is just shot up uh, about 22 points, so we're going to... There he is. How sharp is his are his horns, as they say? We'll find out right after this. Bloomberg's opening bell has been brought to you by Palm. Or so from its highs, the other averages, the S&P and Dow, also down for the year. Ash Reagan joins us from Prudential. He says this is as bad as it gets. First of all, Ash, good morning to you. Good morning. Tell me why this is as bad as it gets. It's the confluence, Dylan. I mean, too many things, negative things, are happening at the same time. In a classic bear market that, that we are in, even good news is bad news, and bad news is terrible news. So, and we are really confronting both. And even with the little panacea that we may expect December when the Fed meets and hopefully takes off the inflation bias, it may be too little too late uh, to help this market. But I'm still saying, don't panic necessarily. Just hang in there things will turn if it's not the first quarter perhaps the second quarter next boy year. I listen to you you know and 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 and, you, and and all those negative characteristics everybody's all too familiar with at this point and and, and I want and I wonder how I know that this is as bad as it gets how do I know it doesn't get worse for the next three to six months good point and saying that it could get worse is stating the obvious it's half gotten worse I personally thought we hit the bottom we did the bottom thing and we're off making new highs and then we had an election crisis that came right out of left field no no anticipation whatsoever by anybody and that aggravated it further and now you have an earnings crisis that's coming up in the fourth quarter you have certainly technology spending doubts for next year it seems to be a ripple effect that strategists analysts with matter investors uh, just don't seem to have control over at this point and, and, but, but now you know now everything you're describing to me sounds like an argument that a bear would be making and yet you tell me you're still relatively bullish going forward and so now I'm confused yeah, there you are and so are millions of investors in this market Dylan the point I'm trying to make is yes I'm a secular optimist in the sense while well, I'm redefining myself all I'm saying is you can't throw the towel into this market you can't do things that are extremely creative the point again is you have to understand that the near term um, you have to acknowledge it's weak and it's clearly against you. The roadblocks are there in your face in this market. At the same time, clients call you. You tell them to buy stocks? Not particularly. 
I would first thing I ask them to do is to weed out what you already have that shouldn't be there in the first place. And that's the first step. Second step is if they are long-term investors and they can make a commitment to the definition as in year, two years, three years, that they can go back and buy some names that have been crushed, the babies that have been thrown out of the bathwater. And they clearly would need to be bought at this point. Well, Acknowledging there could still be a 5-10% decline from here. Which makes me feel like the horns on your, on your bowl, as it were, are rather dull at this point. I can still see the flavor of humble pie in my mouth as I said okay well I guess we all have to eat that perhaps more often than any of us would go. like as you've been forced to reevaluate your own strategy ash by a market that has given you no alternative yes well what actually, strategy do you, uh, do you what's what is your reestablishment of strategy as your original bull strategy coming out of the summer obviously was a failed one Precisely. The first thing is this. You manage your expectations. You manage it for yourself, and you manage it for the clients. You manage it for the customers and investors in general. The 40, 50, even the 35% years are sort of behind us for the time being. We have to, get un we have to understand that we come back to the 10, 12, 13%, and hopefully the magic of compounding will help your wealth grow the next couple of years. But then again, I mean, uh, we are making predictions here that, that are far too much in the future. What is really confronting you near term are issues that that sober you. You have a, a weak euro, you certainly have oil prices that you have to deal with, but more importantly, you have to resuscitate earnings because of the slow economy and then battle this confusion between a slow, soft landing and a hard landing, which is still a crisis this market has to handle. And to make it worse, you have an election uncertainty thrown in. Too much for an average investor to handle. And so, uh, and I, again, I, I, we, I introduced you as a bull, but I'm leaving this interview with a sensation, Ash, that you're more bearish. Which is a, which is a typical class cycle of any investment process deal and you, you you start with a conviction you start with what you believe and then you handle these operational difficulties air pockets if you will of course air pockets in this market have been huge and this year has been disastrous to say the least the quicker you acknowledge it's been a tough challenging year you brace yourself for the rewarding years that are ahead of you so all I'm saying is be patient be optimistic but be very very selective and manage your expectations down understood Ash it's always a pleasure thank You're you welcome. sir Ash Reagan with us from Prudential. His names, uh, as it stands right now, include Chubb, Bank One, Chevron, CVS, and Clorox. So if you're looking for some safe, more risk-averse spaces, in his opinion, uh, it would be uh, those names. To the big board we go. Markets settled here. Monica, back up to the booth. Chicken. Yield now down to 6% even. The 10-year adding three-quarters of a point. The yield there down to about 6 and a quarter percent Ash Reagan kicks off today's Market Minute. He's the Senior Vice President over at uh, Prudential Securities and our own Karen Gibbs at the Midtown offices of Charles Schwab. Welcome, folks. Good evening, Neil. Uh, Ash, to you first, pretty lousy month. Yes, to say the least. Uh, no volume, no conviction, no breath. Uh, some rallies, they don't stick. I was very surprised about yesterday. I was actually encouraged, despite the <coughs> criticism, that there was no conviction or no volume. I think we're starting the recovery phase here. Um, it's interesting, too, because, Karen, a lot of folks were worried that with the huge run-ups we had yesterday, we've been so used to essentially wiping those out the very next day of trading. Now, we were down today, but the fact is we didn't wipe everything out from yesterday. Do you find that technically appealing or no? No, not really. In fact, today and yesterday, pretty much noise ahead of Friday's key employment numbers. And, in fact, all of this has happened on very light volume, which makes it a little suspect, Neil. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the things that's always interesting... Uh, our crack staff decided to put together some memorable issues and how they performed, Ash. Some of them very interesting over the course of the month. Some very widely held names that had a tough go of it in just this past month. AT&T, that's down 25%. General Motors, that's down 25%. Apple, losing almost a third of its value in one month. Best Buy, a, a part of that hurt retail sector that only in the end of the month was coming back, down 21%. What was going on? How bad was May underneath the major averages? You know, add to that list Cisco and Oracle, and you'll see a pattern emerging here. Absolutely. Technicians will once again argue, they start to throw out the generals with the rest of the, the bathwater, if you will. That is usually a side of the bottom. I'm willing to believe and contribute to that theory, but the reality at the end of the day is we are fighting the Fed. The Fed is winning this clean, and until June, we get some sense of a truce here in this war and this battle. We, we, we are not off to the races yet. I don't know what a month tells me, Karen, when you have an ExxonMobil up 10% and an Anheuser-Busch up a like amount. <laughs> 
what what's going on there besides <laughs> just the reading of the the slippery energy thing and people drinking their sorrows away? That's but what true. can we read? You know, we're fueling both things here. You know, uh, we did see a pickup of, of automobile traffic. We're still seeing lots of people buying these SUVs, which you know are gas guzzlers. And you add to that the cost of fuel going up globally. Um, the Anheuser Busch situation, though, is kind of interesting. I'm not quite sure what you could uh, rely that on, except maybe you're looking at the summer picnic season and people stocking up. Yeah, I, they, I don't like. And they do have snacks, but go, but go, go ahead. I'm sorry. Ed. I don't like drinking and driving stocks, Neil. I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> I like, That's like the tie-in I was looking for. <laughs> I like good old-fashioned telecom technology, e-commerce, and software. That's where the action is. It'll come back. I'm patient. All It'll right. So back. is this the month of the comeback? The fact that we didn't have to sort of give up everything we gained yesterday. What do you What do you think that the June looks like versus May? No, I, I think the jury is still out as to what the Fed will say after they raise rates 25. 50 basis points in June. Which is it, Only, by the way, 25 or 50? Uh, well, we are at the 50 uh, school. Uh, in the and, June uh, meeting? Yes, the wow. June meeting. Only because there's an election, presidential election campaign coming right after, and historically the Fed has not meddled with okay. the presidential election. So I'm, I'm willing to believe that they'll get it over with, and they need to. So, All right. uh, yeah. Ash, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Ash Reagan and my friend Karen Gibbs, thank you both very much. All right, straight ahead on your world mortgage rate, shoot through the roof. Fine. Stop with in the next few months. Fortunately, inventories, of, we got a clue of in inventory buildup back in the summer thanks to information technology. We had that clue, but we still have to work it out. It's going to take some time. Asha, Liz Clayman here. I'm yes, interested Liz. to know your feelings. You've always been very bullish, particularly about the tech sector. Are you just a bit more cautious right now? And what would you advise investors? At uh, Liz, this point? not only cautious, I've just begun to understand this a little more in the sense that this is going to be a broad market when this pans out. Even if we get some sort of an uplift in this market, second half of this year or sooner, it's going to be mundane names essentially pickling and, 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 and diversified, not just one single sector or one short list like we used to have in technology. I don't know. Everybody seems to think that after the second quarter, earnings will magically explode and do really well. Do you see it that way? Uh, not necessarily, but even if the economy... Okay, thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye. It's president at Prudential Securities in New York. But Brian Finnerty says no way. The managing director at CE Underberg Tobin joining us from the firm's trading floor. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. You're welcome. Hey, well, Ash, it's easy to make your case, but why don't you go ahead and do so? Well, actually, uh, I'm not washing my hands of technology. I don't want to be misrepresented. Uh, but the point I'm trying to make here is you cannot cannot be over dependent on technology and telecom and say I was in the last three four years and so most of my uh, clients and investors along with me but to diversify into financials and retailers and energy and healthcare to give it a broader base portfolio so I'm not washing my hands of tech but I'm becoming extremely prejudiced as to the selectivity as to where I want to be despite the weakness in that particular I sector. mean Ash I have to say something it says something that you're saying I'm not washing my hands of tech you have been a bull forever. precisely precisely so it's a huge infliction change from that point right. in the sense that I was the poster boy for technology and telecom all these years. Right. Yes. Brian, I will say, you are brave. This is perfect, Brian. This is absolutely <laughs> perfect. I got Ash Reagan, my old buddy Ash, going <laughs> negative on tech stocks. Right there, the there's nobody you with you now, Brian. You're stuff. alone. Well, that's the key, Brenda. Everybody's negative right now. To a man, you can't find a bull anywhere in the United States. It's really crazy. And I got to tell you, People are just throwing stocks out the window right now, and their valuations have been cut in half, cut in half again, and then cut in half again. Yeah, but they're so, still high, though, Brian. I mean, Cisco's high? still 60. It's, Cisco's it's still PE. 60. To, Cisco's still 60. The PE 60. Well, by the way, it's not. By the way, and its peg is below one right now, which is the price to growth rate. So you've got to look at the growth rates of these companies. You've got to see if they can sustain them. I know Ash will say they can't sustain these growth rates. But well, really, Brenda, you've got to look and see where a bottoming process is made. And i got to tell you another thing, going back to what Karen was saying, inflation. I mean, there's not an economist or a money manager out there that doesn't think there's a greater risk to growth. The real risk out here is the growth in this economy. That is the risk, not inflation. The Fed's going to be back on our side in the very near future. Okay. And days like this make it more likely that it will happen sooner okay, than Okay, but March I got to say, Brian, though, and I want to get to your picks right now because you say it's time to buy. You mentioned the Fed as the great salvation. Mm -hmm. The truth is the Fed cut cut rates by a full and point in January, and look right. where we are, racist. Well, that's what we went up in January. We sort of forgot about the Fed, and we focused on profits again, which are gloomy for right now. And today's Wall Street Journal article was saying we're not going to have anything till next year now, 
I mean, that's really throwing in the towel. Okay. So okay, I've so got to say, the Fed's on our side, and you got to buy them right in here. Yeah, and you like uh, applied microcircuits, which uh, I have to say I was kind of surprised at. Nortel is its biggest customer, isn't it? Yeah, but that's why the stock is down to 34 or 35, wherever it closed today, from 140-something. Right. The, it's in the price of the stock is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. And new focus down here in the low 20s from 60 only a couple of weeks ago uh, was my other one. And Copen down to $9.00 you know, from, uh, it was a high of uh, right. 50. Right, Ash, what do you like? You know, I so want Brian to be right, from his lips to God's ears, <laughs> but the, having said that, I, I just, I don't want to deny the fact that financials are still up there in my portfolio. I want to own the insurance companies, AIG, I know they are boring. They are not your, the, the, the technology wizards of the past that I used to recommend, but uh, AIG is right up there in, in, my, in my list. So are retailers like Walmart, Gap, Lowe's, uh, only because right. I think early cycle retailers will come back, and healthcare. Uh, I would look at King Pharmaceuticals here, yes. But a lot of the techs that you that currently people hold, because they still are very the widely hold, do you sell on the spikes now, Ash? Is well, that what you, you're good suggesting? Good question. Good question. If you own core holdings like the Cisco's or Nortel's of the world, it's hard to just let them go at, after such a huge bleed. So my sense to some of those people is if you're willing to manage your expectations and hold them on its core holdings for at least a year, year and a half, hold on to them, maybe even dollar cost average to bring your cost basis down. But if you were a trader, still are, and are looking at a quick V-turn type of a return, don't anticipate that it won't happen anytime soon. And Brian, what you do with your money really does depend on how you how you view this market. Either you sell it into does. the spikes or you buy on the dips. You're buying on the dips? Uh, yeah, and, but Ash is right. And everybody's a trader now, Brenda. Everyone's trading them, and that's why the pressure on the market. No one believes in anything right now. Everybody is absolutely scared to death. They really are. Therefore, they're selling stocks. That's usually the time this to get in. This is the time to be buying stocks when everyone wants to get out of them. For the long term, the way to make the real money is to be buying and accumulating good companies at their lows, at or near their lows. You can never pick the exact bottom. And what is the one thing, Brian, that you think um, is going to make people buy? Because they're sitting on the sidelines. Big Fed cuts. Big Fed rate right. cuts that will stimulate this economy. Is, is that enough for you, Ash? That and a tax cut will be a one-two punch, a sentiment right. change. I'll be all the way back to the races again. Okay, you, you two are the greatest. Thanks so much. Ash Reagan and Thanks, Brian Finley. Appreciate Ash. it. Thank you. Bye. Straight ahead on this edition of Your World, does President Bush have this whole tax cut thing wrong? I've got a Republican.